Grace and peace, everyone. This song is called Unknown God, and it's a song that was inspired by Paul's trip to Athens, where he saw the Athenians had many altars built to various gods. The god of the sun, the god of the moon, of the harvest, of love. They had basically an altar for any kind of thing that they valued in their society. They felt like there's a god behind it, and they built an altar to that god. But Paul saw all of those altars, and he was grieved in his heart. And he also noticed that they had one altar that had the inscription to the unknown god. So he told the Athenians that that is the God I'm telling you about. He is the God who trumps all these other false gods that you've built altars to. And he is the only true living God. And in him we live and move and breathe and have our being. So this song was inspired by that. And I hope that it is an encouragement to everyone.
God for all of his mercies and his kindness that he's shown us every moment of every day. Hasn't he been good to all of us? He's been so good. Even the times when we don't feel it, you might wake up one day, maybe you woke up this morning and you just didn't feel, you didn't feel the way you felt yesterday. That's the way our emotions operate sometimes, where you can be on, on a high one day even just the day before, and the next day you wake up and you're like, what happened? I was feeling so good and so alive the day before. But what stays the same at all times is God's mercies that are new every morning. And there, his faithfulness is from everlasting to everlasting. And we can hang on to that regardless of how we're feeling or whatever is going on around us. He remains the same. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this new day that you've given us to be alive yet again, and we thank you for all of your faithfulness in every single situation. Lord, you've never failed us, and you've not forsaken us, nor will you ever do it. Your steadfast love has endured through the millennia and is enduring for us day after day. Lord, I pray that the word that you have for us today, that we'll find in your scriptures, that we will be strengthened by it, encouraged by it, that we'll be able to stand up strong in these days, standing up for you and enduring through all things. Lord, I bless you for all of your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of today's sermon is Unity of the Spirit in the Bond of Peace. Unity of the Spirit in the Bond of Peace. And that comes from the book of Ephesians Chapter 4, unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And we'll get to that scripture in a moment. But to lead up to that, just want to talk a little bit about the times that we are in and how what we are seeing in our world today is not something unexpected or something that should surprise us. But living here in the West, the situations going on in our world today can surprise us because we have, a lot of us have lived in a bubble for a long time. Especially if you're younger, like uh, my generation or generations um, below me, we haven't really experienced a lot of trauma in our, in our lifetimes. And so seeing things on, that's going on around us can be very traumatic to a lot of us. Of course, many people didn't grow up in the West and grew up in societies where they were surrounded by traumatic situations. And so this isn't as much of a surprise. But for, by and large, many people are very surprised by what they're seeing. And in the past year, past couple years, we've been seeing so many um, surprising and, and jarring traumatic situations here in the U.S., we, see, we saw the, the riots that happened in, in the capital. We see, of course, coronavirus that has been with us for over a year now. We see wars and all sorts of tumult across the world. We see what's going on in Afghanistan. And it causes us to wonder what is going on and, and what is going to happen tomorrow and what is going to become of us. But Jesus had something to say at, at, uh, at the time that he was walking the earth regarding what would be coming in the days to come. And in Matthew chapter 24, starting from verse 3, it says that, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, 
Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. So we see here a very uh, gripping and grim story of what is to come and what actually has been happening and we will see more of in the days to come is that nations will be rising against nations wars is that's to be expected and it's to be expected that there will be tribulation for those who have claimed allegiance to Christ that's all of us that trouble is coming and trouble is here and we ought to not be surprised when trouble does come. But the, the truth of the matter is that in the midst of all of this, we have a, an anchor for our soul to keep us from falling away and to keep us from being consumed by what is to come. It would be a very depressing and horrible uh, story if Jesus said that these things were coming, but sorry guys, I'm about to go up to my father and you all just take care of yourselves. <laughs> that would be very sad. But that's not what Jesus left us with. He said that he would send the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. He said that he would be with us always, even to the end of the age, even up to when he comes back. And furthermore, God has provided us with graces to sustain us through these times. And what I mean by that is there are things that we, can, that we do, things that we are involved in that help to keep our faith from falling away in these times that we are in. And one of those most important things is the church, the body of Christ, which is not just our church here, but is the church worldwide, Christ's body. Christ's body is there, it's his bride, it's what he will come back for one day, and we will be the ones to be a part of that new creation where God redeems all of creation and heaven is, is part of all of that. And it's key that the church, that the church is a key part of that. So in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul writes about how at one time, there was a division. There, were, there was the family of God, the Israelites, God's chosen people, through whom God chose to uh, bring about his redemption. And Jesus came, and he tore down that middle wall of separation between the Israelites and God's chosen people and those who are surrounding the Gentiles, which included the barbarians, included the Romans, included the Greeks it includes all of us. None of us are Israelites by birth. And through Jesus' blood, he, ha he brought in all people of all nations to be a part of God's church, God's bride, Christ's bride. And that's what we are part of today. And there, there are many things that are held, held together by the church. One of them is faith. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10, you can turn there, starting from verse 19, it says, 
Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our, our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir, stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. And that day is the day of the Lord that Jesus talked about in the book of Matthew. So that you see that the church has a critical part to play in sustaining faith in these times. And there is the church universal, which is believers all over the world. That's the church. But there's also the local church, which is the church where you attend, gather together with believers under one roof, or in our case, under tents, to focus our affections on Christ together. And the church is critical because, and now I'm talking about the local church, is because we need one another in order to sustain our faith day after day. There is something about being human where we cannot live life in solitude. Those who are put in solitary confinement due to something that they did, some crime that they did, what typically happens is that they start to have mental issues. Being isolated like that for long periods of time, it starts to affect you mentally because we're not meant to be isolated. And so when we are isolated as believers and we're not with others, we are, we expose ourselves to, um, to issues. And here in the book of Hebrews, it's saying that we should hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. At one point in time, you and I confessed that we would follow Jesus, that we would trust him with our lives and we would obey him. But there is an enemy of our soul who is actively trying to derail our faith. At any moment of any day, he's actively trying to derail our faith. And there are so many temptations around us to cause us to fall away. But here in the word of God is saying that we that we should, we should uh, look out because there is a chance that we can, we can fall away and that we should hold fast the confession of our faith, faith and not waver because he has promised, who who promised is faithful. And this is key, verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That's a daily task, it says, that day after day we should consider each other and say words that encourage each other and build each other up. Because there's a day coming where we all have to give account. In scriptures, we're told that we should, we should be careful with the words that we speak, that we will have to give account for those those. Um, those uh, flippant or errant words that we may speak, uh, God will, will hold us to those words. And so I think about often about my conversations that I have. Is every word that I speak to people a word that will build them up, that will encourage them? Or am I speaking words that will either tear them down or just be useless words that are not helpful? This is something that we should think about because every single word has the power to either build someone up or to hold them back and even to tear them down. The word says that there, there's power in our tongues. And our tongues are like the rudder of a boat. The rudder of the boat is small compared to the boat, but it has the ability to turn the boat whichever way the captain wants the bo boat to turn. And that's the way our tongues are. That just with the word, you can, someone who is weak in faith, your word can cause their faith to just fall to the wayside. And likewise, just the word can be strong enough to build somebody up. It can be just the word that they need in that day. 
And we need to take heed to that and think about that, that our words have the power to strengthen and bolster one another's faith. So I should think about it when I encounter a brother or sister, is there a word that I can say to help them in that moment, to encourage them and keep their faith strong? And that's why the church is so critical, the local church, is because you have a concentration of believers, and with our words, we can build each other's faith up. Some of us came here to service carrying certain burdens. Maybe the week was hard. Maybe you saw things on the news that brought your heart down. Maybe something didn't go right in your life this past week, and you come to church, and there's something about being here where we're singing worship to God, where we're speaking words of encouragement, where you leave this place encouraged and able to embark on another week with renewed and strengthened faith. And that's what God how God designed it to be. But what we have in these days, and you and I have seen it so um, blatantly, is that uh, this, the pandemic has exposed where a lot of people's hearts are. A lot of people have used this as an opportunity to sit back on their oars and relax in their faith. A lot of people will say, oh, because of the pandemic, I don't want to come to service. But you will often see the same people out and about, maybe even without a mask, doing their, uh, their, tr their daily activities. Um, so what that shows is where is our heart really at these times? Tribulations, trials have a way of exposing where our hearts really are and what we really value in life. When hardships come, that's when it really shows what you really treasure. In these times that Paul wrote, if you think about it, the, the church lived in a very, um, very difficult time. It wasn't easy at all to meet together, to have fellowship as a church. It wasn't like this, where we're free to worship, have, an, have our speakers uh, playing music out there. No one's bothering us. It wasn't like this in th those times. In these times, they risked being um, imprisoned. They risked being beaten and killed for naming the name of Christ. And doing something like this would be very risky. And we should also know that there are many people today, this, not just in Bible times, but today in many countries where meeting out in the open is a death warrant for them. It, the many people have to meet in hiding. They have to meet under the cover of uh, someone's home in underground, and they can't do this out in the open because they'll be taken to jail or they'll be beaten or killed. And we should realize that the model of the church that we have become used to in the West is an anomaly where we have very big edifices and things are nice and smooth and you have programs that, that run nicely and lots of funding and everything is just so organized. That's an anomaly. That is not the norm. And there, there's coming a day where all of that may be stripped away, where to meet as believers together, worshiping God, will be a situation where it could get us fined, it could get us put in jail, it could get us beaten and killed. Many people will say, no, that can never happen in America. That can never happen in the West. We never know. We do know that there is a day coming where it will be very difficult to be a Christian. So therefore, in these times, it should be a signal for us to really examine our hearts and ask what is really in our hearts. When we have lockdowns happening and our whole schedules are, are turned upside down and we're scrambling to try and still have service in some way, though it's very different from what we're used to, what is our reaction? Is our reaction to pull back and just... Uh, choose a life of comfort? Or is our reaction to do everything we can to try and be in God's presence somehow, some way? Of course, everyone has certain situations that they're working through. Maybe you have a health situation where you just can't come out. 
Like we have one sister who's going through chemotherapy and she has some special situations. But in general, our heart should be in the place where wherever, wherever I, whatever I need to do to maximize my, my walk with God, I need to do it. Because the day is coming where the word of God will be more difficult to access. It, this, is, this is something that, that Jesus promised us. The love of many will grow cold. And we're seeing that today, that many people, their love is growing cold. Their love for Jesus is growing cold. And the situations happening around us, we're using it as an excuse for us to sit back and, and for our faith to fall to the wayside. The question that we need to really ask ourselves in these times is what do we really treasure? Or rather, who do we really treasure? Our treasure ought to be Christ. He should be our supreme treasure above all things. And that should be the steady current that runs through our lives regardless of what happens in this world. Because what, when that happens, people can come around you and will call you names and will threaten you and will even physically harm you, but you will stay firm on the rock that Christ is my treasure and I'm not going anywhere, regardless of what happens. In fact, that's the first command that we should love the Lord our God with all our hearts, our minds, and our strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. The bo everything boils down to that, that we should treasure him above all things. And when that happens, when situations start to, uh, upheaval is happening around us, our faith will not start to fall to the wayside and we stop making excuses for our faith. In the book of 1 John, um, 1 John chapter 2, John writes that there are many who were among us. They came out with us. They were with us, but, but in the end, they, they fell away. They did not continue on with us. And what he says that it exposes where their heart really was, that all along, though they were walking with us, their hearts were never with us. So when tribulation happens, who were the first ones to scatter? Those ones who heart, whose hearts were, were not there in the first place. So in the midst of everything that's happening around us, the, the good thing that is happening is that God is separating the the wheat from the tares, the goats from the sheep. He is showing those whose hearts were really with him and those whose hearts were not with him. But for you and I, let's make sure that our hearts are truly with Jesus, that he is our treasure, that no matter what happens, if lockdown happens, if restrictions are put in place, that our desire is to pursue him by all means and do everything we can to be in his presence. Let's not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, of being together, the value of being together in one place, worshiping together. There's power in being together, united, under one roof or under a tent or under an open sky. There's power in being together as a, as a church, as believers. And the thing the enemy wants is to separate us, to make us alone so that our faith is thrown to the, to the wayside. Amen. So let's bow our heads. Father God, I thank you for this word that you've given us that we ought to stand firm. Our faith ought to stay firm, girded up by your spirit, first of all, and sustained by the fellowship together of believers. Lord, I pray for those who have drifted during these times, drifted away from the faith, those who have drifted away from the, the rigor that they used to have in their walk with you. And Lord, I pray that you restore them and draw them back and bring conviction. All of us, Lord, I pray that you'll, you'll strengthen our faith. I pray for your blessings on those who have committed themselves to following you diligently. And as the times grow more difficult, like you promised, I pray that we will not be discouraged, but we will find our hope and our strength and our courage and encouragement in you. May we build each other up with our words. May we build each other up with our faith. And Lord, would you sustain us into the day that you return. 
Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. And I pray for those believers who are living in very difficult situations, in societies where it will cost them their lives to proclaim your name. Please keep them strong. Keep them from falling away. We thank you for all you've done and all you will continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen.